With the bandit being the new starting weapon, I'm getting a lot of people asking me, how do I get better? What are some tips I can use for bandit on mouse and keyboard and for controller? Well, why should you trust me? I've got over 2000 hours on mouse and keyboard. I've got over 2000 hours on Halo Infinite. I'm a forerunner for the game, so I got to test things way earlier than everybody else. And on top of that, I'm a Halo Infinite coach as well. And I have multiple students that I've helped rank up very, very fast. Metify link in the description below if you're interested in that, if you want to take it seriously that way. On top of that, I'm also an HCS analyst and I also watch pros every single day as an analyst and as a commentator. So I think that's enough reasons, maybe. So if you've gotten all those reasons and now you trust me, you know, don't worry, I'm not going to bite. Tip number one, we'll start right off the bat. It's going to be Octagon. Octagon is an incredible way to get better at individual skill. Now, you don't have all of the you know, dips and dives that you do in a normal map, but this is just going to up your individual raw aim, which is what we want to do on the bandit. So what you're going to do right off the bat is you're going to go here to your menu screen. You're going to go to custom game. Okay. Now I've already saved this map, but if you go to community, you go to popular map and you go over here and you type Octa, you will find all the octagon maps. The one I like to use is called H uh, A H P octagon 2.0 so get that map i'll have a link to that in the description below if i can figure out how to do it regardless very easy for you Cut, go to the keywords type in octagon okay and then popular modes you're going to want to do the same you're going to want to top type octa and then you're going to see one that says 1v1 shield octagon 1v1 shield regen or real recharge this one right here so make sure you bookmark both of these things go to them click the bookmark button and then you're going to be able to start a custom game what this octagon does is essentially you're going to play octagon with one of your friends that also wants to get better at the game call them up right now dm them on discord wherever you got to do say hey buddy we got to get better we're doing this every single day and you should you should do this every single day before ranked you should get into an octagon and play to at least 100. and what the shield regen is is it basically gets you to a point where you have to hit every single shot so if you're not five shotting the other player will regen their shields if you're if you're shooting if you're hitting a snipe if you want to have a snipe as a secondary if you've played octagon in the past you know snipe as a secondary is good and then you miss the headshot directly after the body shot you will also have their shields be regening so again it provides uh it, it gives you an opportunity to have to play perfect you know with the bandit and it'll allow you to get better with the bandit over time and it's a great warm-up as well that repetitiveness with the instant respawns is perfect for getting warmed up before your ranked game so i would do this every single day as a routine just like going to the gym working out same thing get on do your octagon and get started before you play rank tip number two is going to be pace your shots now by pace your shots i mean usually you hit someone five shots is going to be a perfect if you hit the last shot on the head. But the problem is a lot of players will spam their shots and consistently miss that very last shot. And the very last shot is obviously the most important one because you have to hit it directly on the head. You can't hit the side of the head. You can't hit their shoulder. Well, you could probably hit the side of the head, but you can't hit their shoulder. Um, you can't hit their neck. You have to hit directly on the their head especially if you're on mouse and keyboard you don't have the same magnetism that control players have so you really got to be accurate with that and that shouldn't be a problem for us we have our entire arm to use right so what i would suggest is when you're in a fight make sure you're shooting four times and then on that very last shot you are even pacing it for even if it's like a tenth of a second you're pacing it so that you accurately hit that fifth shot you can't just always rush it. If you have the fifth shot lined up, then you just rush it. Then you can get a quick five shot in. But for that very last shot, even if you're seven shotting somebody, make sure you line it up. Make sure you wait and then hit the shot when you're aimed directly on the head. Tip number three is try not to long range across the map. Now, this is a big one here. The meta has shifted. This is coming from pro players such as Sparty, um, from Sentinels and Snakebite of FaZe, who just won the world championship. The game is changing. You don't want to really cross map anymore. Now, this is going to be separate for my controller subscribers and, of course, my mouse and keyboard subscribers. So we'll start with the controller players first. For you guys... I want you to get up close. I want you to get up close into a fight. I want you to utilize your movement, learn your curb slides, learn how to curb slide better and more efficiently so that you can get up in a fight, 
but also be very careful about it. You don't want to just curb slide into three enemies and then die. Positioning is very, very important. This is where Halo kind of separates itself from other games. You've got to be precise on the actions you're making. You can't just jump in and not think about what you're doing and just try to go for the five shot. You have to, you know, if you're curb sliding, you have to curb slide into a situation where you're still safe. Um, but I don't want you shooting across the map too much. If you're forced to shoot across the map, let's say you're on recharge and you're trying to cross map from top glass to top cat. If you don't know call outs, there's some videos out there that'll help you with that. Then maybe a couple shots to try and hold someone off is good, is decent, but there's gonna be BRs on every map. And I would suggest if you're holding down an anchor position like that, pick up a battle rifle. It's very, very important. Uh, otherwise, as a controller player, I would try to get up close. As a mouse and keyboard player, we, as mouse and keyboard players, still have the ability to shoot across map. And I think people are gonna start to realize this as time goes on. I've done a lot of testing with this weapon. And what I've realized is, the same way you pace your shots on the fifth shot for the, for the bandit rifle up close is the same way you pace your shots long range, but it's a, it's a different type of pace, right? These bullets that you see that are coming out of your weapon, they're not hit scan. Contrary to popular belief, they are actually not hit scan. Um, they are just a very fast paced projectile, okay? So, at long range, you have to pace your shots a little bit better, and you gotta make sure that that very center circle is directly on the head, and you also have to lead a tad bit. Like, it's a very tiny bit you have to lead, but we can shoot across map because of how easy it is to hit that right click button and then shoot across the map. So I would say, even with the bandit, mouse and keyboard can still do that. If you come by my stream, twitch.tv slash active E, it's right here um, on the screen and also in the description below, you'll see that I constantly cross map and I win two V1s against controller players. By the way, I'm playing pros every single day um, at like 1900 Onyx and, and, and or 17, 1800 Onyx. I can two V1 a lot of the times and it's just based off the fact that Mouse and keyboard long range is still very strong. You just gotta learn how to play it. Now this is gonna be a two-parter for tip number four. Everyone in my chat comes in and types exclamation mark FOV after they see me playing a while and they're kind of wondering what FOV I'm on so that they can utilize the same FOV. So I'm gonna give an explanation of why I use the FOV I use and this is a two-parter because the reason I use the FOV is also the, the thing that you need to be decent at in order to maximize the potential of the bandit. So, I use 120 FOV. For those of you guys that have used 120 FOV, movement is absolutely insane, right? You feel like you can curb slide a lot better. Just movement in general is just a lot better on 120 FOV. Um, it's, it's also like getting used to it. It just feels like the margin for error on 120 FOV is a lot slimmer um, when you're doing curb sliding, etc. So, I would definitely work on your movement. If you're not good at curb slotting just yet, obviously I would take it step by step. This is what I tell all my students when I'm coaching, trying to identify their problems and then we fix them step by step. But um, again, Medify in the link in the description below if you're really serious about getting better at the game, I can definitely provide you value. Um, but anyway, I use 120 FOV now. Back when this game first came out and pretty much up until the bandit, you know, the BR changed to the bandit as a starting weapon, I wasn't using anywhere near 120 FOV, but that was because one of our strengths as mouse and keyboard players was our long range shot. Now, if you change your FOV, you'll notice that the bandit crosshair changes as well, or reticle, whatever you want to call it. But in this game, or with the bandit, is a little bit different than the BR. The BR would shrink down all the way to the lowest size. It would be really, really tough to see anything. Uh, cross map, and everything would be just really difficult. I don't know, very, very tough to use for me. So that's why I normally stuck around 100, 105 FOV for the majority of the time. But with the Bandit, things are a bit different, okay? You can use 120 FOV. Your center circle doesn't change, which is the circle you should be looking through when you're shooting. Just a bonus tip for you right there. But when you zoom in, your outer circle gets bigger. So it's almost like you're on a higher FOV anyway. So it brings you to a higher, um, so, I'm sorry, a lower FOV. It brings you to a lower FOV, and then you still get the benefits of being on a high FOV. It is literally perfect. I just saw, I've been pretty much on 120 since the bandit change happened. Uh, I think it's the most comfortable FOV for me. And then I just went on Snakebite, one of the, you know, the world champion on phase, Snakebite stream, and he said the same thing. He's on a 120 FOV due to the fact that movement is king with a bandit. 
And that's the second part of this answer, or the second part of this tip. Movement is king. Get better at curb sliding. Get better at utilizing your movement so you can get across the map faster. When you get a hit marker with the bandit, that's one shot. When you get a hit marker with a battle rifle, you don't know how many shots you got. You don't know how many bullets were in that player. You don't know how much damage you did. Now, with mouse and keyboard or controller, when you're peak shotting and when you're moving around the map and you're getting that one shot in and then dipping back into cover, a little bit tough with desync, I know, but you can utilize that movement to get those extra shots in, play your life, stay alive, and still be aggressive and get damage in that your teammates can clean up. So movement and potentially trying this new FOV is huge. Now, FOV is all preference. If you wanna to stick to 95 like Naded and be a boomer, that's fine, but normally, Movement is definitely much easier on 120, so I like 120. I would say, as a tip, test it. But always, but the second part of this stands true for everybody. Make sure you get your movement good. Get your movement good and be comfortable with peeking around, moving around with the bandit, hitting that single shot, getting behind cover, hitting that single shot again, getting behind cover, and doing that type of damage. It's very, very, very important. If you wanna take this to the next level, like I said, the Medify link is in the description below. I provide VOD reviews for pretty cheap for the value I offer. I provide training plans as well, which is like a couple weeks long. We can really dive into your bad habits, fix them step by step by step. I have testimonials on the website. You can check it out. Lots of students that I've worked with that have climbed. A student went from, I think it was, uh, Diamond won and he placed top 32 at one of the events last year. I, I work with a lot of people and uh, yeah, if you have any questions as well, you can, you can visit the stream, which is also in the description below. I answer all the questions you guys have as well. So I love doing this. I freaking love Halo and I also love you guys for watching all the way to the end. And if you did, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. I really have a warm heart for everyone that watches the entirety of the video. It, it honestly helps a lot. So thank you. Um, and yeah, if you want more tips, you know, hit that sub button. And of course, I will see you in the next video.